Good morning and welcome to my channel. I am Jessica Alstrom and every second Sunday of the month I go live and I do a live stream on what the 411 on the planet is, where we are energetically, what's going down with the ascension process and where we are collectively in our own evolution. So welcome. Thank you guys all for joining me this morning. It is a beautiful day in November. We made it to November. Has this year not gone freakishly fast? Is it just me? But this year has been crazy, crazy fast. And it is getting faster. So I will warn you guys, if you don't already feel the momentum that's really building right now, get ready. You know, that great quote, uh, let go or be dragged has never been more true than it is right now. So I kind of wanted to highlight a little bit of what's going on energetically and then get into kind of the soup and the meat of what and your survival guide, really. I mean, I have kind of put together a little survival guide for you guys for the rest of this year um, just to kind of make sense with where you're heading and have it all just be clarified. Um, I'm an intuitive life coach, and I think my greatest work on the planet is to bring clarification to this journey, to kind of make it simple and understandable so that it kind of all makes sense. And obviously, when things make sense, we feel safe. So when we understand that things need to change for our own evolution, we don't get so scared and terrified of change. So first and foremost, we are in a really big time right now. We are approaching tomorrow, our big 11-11. Some of you guys are already getting there on the planet. But 11-11 is a big day. It's a symbolic day. It's an energy portal day. And what it actually represents, because the numbers 1111 or 11 are both the psychic numbers and the angelic numbers, but they also are like these, these, these aspects of yourself having a face off. So imagine the mortal version of yourself and the immortal version of yourself totally looking at each other looking at each other in a mirror and having kind of a face off of who are we? Where are we? What have we become? What do we know? Who are we? Like, what What are we? And that's really what this powerful day kind of metaphorically symbolizes with us. It's an opportunity. Every time we have a gateway, an opportunity, a porthole, a change, a moon, a full moon, a new moon, a solar flare, it's always an opportunity for us to take stock and really, really look within and see how far we've come. We all have ways to go. But where have we come? Where have we become? What are we aware of now that we weren't aware of this time last year? Awareness and self-realization is the name of this game. You are here to self-realize yourself into an enlightened state, which means that the more enlightened you become, the more aware you become, the simpler everything gets, I promise. Everything gets very simple. And here's why. Because when you finally understand that you are creating your own reality and you begin to take responsibility for that and you stop waiting for reality to bend to your will, you begin to bend time and space and you begin to mold reality into your own unique desires and intentions that is based in peace and love. It isn't based in force. It isn't based in, in begging. It isn't based in comparison. It is based in flow. And as we move into that space, what you guys will notice is that everything just gets easier. You understand people, places, and things much better than you did before. You're not constantly in a state of mystery and curiosity and asking yourself, why me? Why is this happening to me? You will begin to understand that. But it comes from being more aware of yourself. So this 11-11 day, this representation is a celebration. It's a celebration of who and what we are, of what we've become up until this point, of what we can offer the world, how we can be of service. What is our level of contribution? What is the dedication and discipline through our own challenge of this year brought us to? Like, what have we allowed and who have we allowed? And that's really kind of a marker. It's a celebration. It's an activation. It's a metaphorical state of being. So this is an opportunity for us all to take stock and really look at ourselves. Now, the next day after that is the full moon. Now, the full moon in Taurus, if you guys know any Tauruses, which I've got a couple of kids that are Tauruses upstairs right now, and they're, they're stubborn and grounded. They're stubborn and grounded. They like their stuff. They like their comfort. They like knowing what's going to happen. They like knowing 
who and where everybody is supposed to be. And it is the essence of that kind of that, the initial sign behind it. So you take that, now you flip that solid stability, right? The, the stuff, the mortal side, and you throw that in the Scorpio Mercury retrograde, right in the middle. If that's not another face off, I don't know what it is. So the deep waters, the still waters of the Scorpio energy that are bringing up all that old, deep, buried grief and emotion and anger inside of you, that's all coming up right now where you still feel that bipolar kind of shifts and that kind of crazy mind thing that happens when you're hot and cold in the same day, when you feel, you know, spiritually schizophrenic, that is really what that energy is bringing up. Now we got the retrograde on top of that. And the retrograde is designed to restart you, repattern you, repurpose you, reinstall you. And when that's happening with a full moon that's holding on, right? And the Scorpio passionate energy of all that you've become, it's like it's like a storm of chaos. And so some of you guys are probably feeling that all these doors are closing right now, yet at the same time of all these doors are closing, all these doors are opening, you know, things that you thought you were going to be doing this time this year have completely changed. The people in your life are changing. The places in your life are changing. Your desires are changing. Your wants and needs are changing because you are changing. And to allow this really big storm of chaotic energy to just come up and out of you is going to be your saving grace for the rest of this year. Allow, 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 witness, 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 no judgment. Watch it. Take a step back and really examine how far you've come, how different you've become, how different the things in your life are, the opportunities that you have in front of you that you did not have before, and find that state of gratitude for yourself. Because when things get really chaotic, the mind has a tendency to want to stabilize and create order. And you cannot create order in a hurricane. You literally have to just constantly find your ground and find, constantly remember who you are and, and really root yourself and, and decide exactly what you want in that moment. And that's really where this kind of anchored energy is going to hold you for the next couple of days until it kind of picks you up and spins you out again. It's basically getting you ready for this January new cycle that we're going to be in. And you guys know that we're in a brand new seven year cycle. And that seven year cycle is all about our own fast level of evolution. We just are completing this year of self-awareness. We're going to be moving into discovery. We're going to be moving into, um, understanding ourselves, exploring our own energy, exploring who we've become. And I will tell you guys that one of the secrets for the upcoming year is the best way to explore who you're becoming and what you're becoming is in relationships. Now, I don't mean traditional 3D relationships that are stuck and anchored in attachment. I mean really deep connections that are not necessarily based in commitments. Now, I'm not saying, hello, free love, let's enter the world. I'm saying that what you'll notice is when you really ground and anchor into self-love, every other relationship in your life becomes a compliment. It does not consume you. It does not anchor you down. The obligations of the stories do not impact your reality. They support your reality. Expansion begins to unfold. So the topic that I really wanted to share with you guys this month is something that we've been working in our classrooms for most of the year now. And one of the secrets that I teach in quantum physics is that, you know, the art, the art of the observer effect is what is truly allowing you to exist in this time space through this conscious based imagination that you are. And in order for you to have any sort of reality, you have to have a focal point. And in that focal point, you will understand that you are creating your reality. But what if you have three focal points? What if you actually are three aspects of yourself creating a reality all around you based in the common denominator of the frequency and vibration that you're projecting? Hmm. This is what we are. We are both mind, body, soul, and all three essences of that we call in our, our classrooms the me, myself, and I is broken down to kind of a really base fourth grade understanding of what that actually could look like.
from a human perspective. And what that actually looks like from a human perspective is there is basically a mother, a father, and a child within you. You've got the divine masculine, you've got the divine feminine, and you've got the divine God spark, the energy spark, the freedom spark, the adventure spark, the love, the unconditional space that never, ever, ever falls short of ecstasy in its own experience. And the three aspects of you travel in this reality, creating scenarios based in that common denominator. So when we break down those three aspects of you, and we see how is this mother nurturing energy doing within you? How is this, this father, this provider, this adventurer, this safe space doing within you? And how is the inner child, the true magic that binds it all together and actually creates the magical reality that you live in? Because it is only the inner child that holds the family together. It is the mother and child that is holding the hand of dad and saying, let's be a family. And really what happens is because this is a holographic universe, the relationship that we're having with ourselves is going to determine every other relationship in your reality, your relationship with money, your relationship with time, your relationship with health and your relationship with other people, including your own body. And all of these reflective points can act as the most perfect guru for you to be able to access your own viewpoint of what it is you're creating in any given moment. You can find out how that divine feminine is doing within you. Is she having to be passive and shut back her heart because she's been so hurt? Has she been seen and heard? Has she been allowed to hold space and create roots? Has the divine masculine within you been able to create the wings and the flow and the structure and the analytical space of expansion in this time space continuum? And is the inner child allowed to create and play and love? Because if one of those things is out of balance, what will happen is the human body will basically malfunction. We all know this as sickness, disease, right? And fatigue, not feeling so good. You're basically offline with yourself. And when there is not a clear transport of energy between the three aspects of you, you don't feel good. You don't feel plugged in to source energy. You don't feel plugged into God. You don't feel plugged in. You feel like you're battery operated. And so you're going to need something outside of you, instant gratification, food, something, someone to pump you back up to give you that false motivation to move you into the next space. And really those times are ending, you guys, because what's happening is your awareness is increasing. And as your awareness increasing, you are remembering yourself. You're putting yourself back together. And as you put yourself back together, what you're gonna notice is that there's fractal pieces of you that are still lost and disassociated that need to come back. And as those pieces come back to you, the subconscious and the unconscious and the super conscious mind begin to tell the same story. And when those three aspects of yourself begin to tell that same story, your life begins to look like a fairy tale. Right now, if there's three different versions of you telling three different stories, you're probably having a very strange reality where you're moving 10 steps forward, 10 steps back, Things are working out, doors are opening and then they're slamming in your face. Opportunities are coming in as fast as they've been taken away. Money's starting to trickle in, but big bills are showing up. This is the aspect of the out of, line, out of alignment relationship with ourselves, which is why I feel that it's a very important time for us to heal and bring forth the inner child. Because if the inner child can then act as the glue, the bridge, the gateway between the mortal and immortal version of ourselves to bring the divine masculine and the divine feminine back into unity. That broken marriage within you that happened through childhood of having to disassociate, wearing really heavy obligations, having to shut down your own basic needs as an empath to care for other people, to have to bite your tongue and get your head out of the clouds and stop dreaming is what has actually created the separation. And when that separation happens, we separate from our world. We separate from each other. Relationships become impossible. Raising kids becomes tragic. 
you know, trying to figure out what our own bodies need to eat becomes impossible. Making a decent living becomes a challenge. When ultimately, when that one powerful, unified spectrum of ourselves comes back into alignment, everything begins to flow. And I know that my highest experience of joy is to being able to create a life from my calling, to create a livelihood, to create a home, to create a job, to create businesses, to create fellowships, to create opportunities for other people, all from my inner calling. But if I can't hear my inner calling, or if I'm rejecting myself, or I'm afraid to shine in the light, or I'm afraid of being humiliated, or I'm afraid of looking silly, sounds like your inner child, doesn't it? So what I've done is I've kind of created this little survival guide for us for the rest of this year. For those of you who are not in the classroom already diving down deep into this. To understand that what actually needs to happen is the inner child needs to bring, be brought forth. Because nothing softens the edge of the divine masculine than watching a child play to seeing a child light up a room. I don't care how big and tough you are and how many motorcycles you ride and how many buildings you build. A two-year-old hands, hands you a play phone, you're going to answer it, no matter who you are. This is the magic of the inner child. And mom who is in terrified fear and anxiety and worry and how she's going to make it to the next day sees her little child come up and give her a hug. She melts into remembering love. And that's where we are right now as a collective. So one thing that I would like for you guys to focus on that will help you kind of give you a little bit of a cheat code and a biohack for the rest of this year is we're all really good at focusing on the overachiever within ourselves. We all have this overachiever. We all have things that are kind of our home field advantage within us, things that we're just naturally good at, things that we don't have to think about. We just do. And people seem very blown away by how good at it we are. And we're just like, yeah, that's just me. I'm not even trying. We all have those aspects of ourselves. We all have some sort of natural beauty. We all have some talent. We all have some creativity. And what the ego part of you does usually is it focuses completely on those areas of who you are, that home field advantage, that overachiever within you. It blows the overachiever up so big that it hides in its own shadow the underachiever within you. And the underachiever in you is the parts of you that you don't think are beautiful, that you don't think are smart that you don't think are intelligent, that you don't think are wise, that you don't think are worth being here. The parts of you that you don't believe that deserve love. The parts of you that have been abandoned and rejected and denied and abused. There are still parts of you within yourself that are what I like to call the underachiever. And for me, the underachiever was someone that I hid away in the closet because I didn't want anyone to look at her. I didn't want anyone to see who she was because if they saw that aspect of me, they might reject me. They might push me away and they might not love me. So instead, I focused all my energy on the overachiever of myself. You know, my fast ability to communicate, my witty banter, you know, my jokes at the most inappropriate time, which you probably know by now, and focused on making myself look as good as I could so that the part of me that felt ugly or ashamed of who I was in the past would somehow be buried under a blanket in a closet in a jail cell. And what I noticed is that girl is the girl who is dyslexic. That girl is the one with the learning disabilities. That is the one who for most of her life felt ugly, ignorant, stupid, and completely unworthy. And that is the girl that I ran away from for so many years, only to circle back to her and realize that it is my dyslexia that gives me the ability to look and feel and see in multidimensional universes. It is my dyslexia that, that teaches me how to see the whole world in reverse so that I can see myself in you as a mirror and you in me as a mirror. It is the gift. It is the purpose within me. It is who I am. And inside of that underachiever, that special needs, that learning disability girl, 
is actually where all of my magic is. And so focusing on your underachievers, guys, who are they? What do you really think about yourself when no one's looking? What is your behavior behind closed doors? Because she is, he is behaving there. You will find yourself in these spaces. And I'm telling you that if you really want to fast forward your progress into this enlightened stage of where we're heading, focus on your underachievers. Focus on the parts of you that you're ashamed of. The what parts of you that you're disgusted by. Can't find them. Don't know where they are. Look through your own eyes at what you judge. What and who do you judge? Because in the things that you are judging or the things that you are angry at or intolerated by or completely perplexed by, irritated by, you will find you. You will find the part of you that you've shoved away in the closet. The part of you that needs to be resurrected. The part of you that needs to be loved. So how do we do that once we find it? Because your first homework for November, getting through this month, is to focus on her or him. This is where the rest of your magic is. This is where you're going to start closing the gap and where you want to be and where you're going. This is the part of you that knows the rest of the way. This is the part of you that's begging for the rest of that self-love journey to finally finish itself. It's easy to love the parts of ourself that everybody else loves. It's easy for us to make the parts of ourselves that are really great bigger, but it's very difficult sometimes to focus on those limitations and, and not look at that as some sort of shortcoming. So when we look at that part of ourselves, we really want to re-nurture it, reparent it, and fall madly in love with it. It is the part of you that needs to be reparented. It is the part of you that needs more of your attention. It is more, it needs the father and the mother within you. And what I like to say is the father within me is the one who's proud of me. The mother inside of me is the one who unconditionally loves and supports me. And having both of those aspects as my inner mind and in my inner thoughts and in my inner voice, I can then reparent my inner child. And as I begin to reparent this inner child, she begins to show her magic to me. And she begins to show her magic to the rest of the world. And she begins to dance like no one's looking and not care what people think. And not live her life in obligations and attachment-based relationships that do not serve her own evolution. She begins to have these genius thoughts that turn into manifestation because she has the motivation and the practical um, application to then perform and act it out. She becomes complete. And this is where the soul's journey is heading. 2020 is the year of vision. It is the year that you can bring your imagination to life. It is where the year that you can create anything that you desire. It is also the year that a lot of secrets that are untold are going to be shown to the public. Are you going to be ready? Are you going to be in judgment of the world because you're still in judgment of you? Are you going to be ready for what you're going to see? Are you going to be ready for what you're going to hear? We're in a big political time right now. There's a lot of choices being made. There's a lot of voices being spoken. There's a lot of perspectives being challenged out there. There's walls going up and there's walls coming down. It is the end of cycles and it is the beginning of cycles. Who do you choose to be? So I want to give you guys some quick parenting tips to parent this inner child. In our teacher training this year, Conscious parenting is at the root of everything that we do. And the reason why is because there is an inner child within you and there is an inner child with everyone that you ever come into contact with. And 97% of us have some sort of wounded inner child within us, a part of ourselves that we were either over nurtured or under nurtured. We were devalued or overvalued. We were not asked to contribute or we were asked to contribute too much. And what it is, is about reparenting that children back that child within you back into balance and finding that balance point where your child can both be challenged in its own greatness and thrive in its own knowing that it deserves and it is worthy of being here the first few years of childhood for most of us i hope not all of us um we're allowed to be here we were allowed to cry we were allowed to ask for what we wanted we were allowed to show off 
we were allowed to sing, we were allowed to dance, we were allowed to have a tantrum, we were allowed to do whatever it was that we needed to do to discover and empower and explore ourselves. And then one day when our, our, ourselves, our bodies, our personalities got too big for the family to deal with, they began to tell us to quiet down and to behave and to stop thinking and stop feeling and stop doing and stop crying and stop dreaming. And it was that confusion of being allowed to be free in the essence of toddlerhood. And then all of a sudden, when we're not those cute little babies anymore, being asked to basically stop everything that was completely intuitive to ourselves became the most craziest confusion that has now been a lifelong journey. You'll notice that your most confusing and triggered points of your life is when you feel disempowered by being yourself and having someone else tell you no, tell you do not do that. Someone bring a tone to your behavior when you're authentic. When you are truly authentic is usually when you are triggered. It is when the ghost of the past is gonna show up and remind you that you aren't a toddler anymore and that you don't get to play. It isn't your time to be safe. It isn't your time to be free. It is your time to work hard, honor your contributions, honor your commitments, honor your obligations, and do what it is that you're supposed to do, which goes completely against the soul's journey. The soul is an anarchist by nature. It is a patriot by nature. It is a lover and freedom-based, abundant creator. So anything other than that perspective is going to feel very confusing to the whole totality of yourselves. So some conscious parenting tips to kind of make it through the rest of this month. They're gonna seem like tough love, but the reason why our conscious parenting is based in tough love is because unconditional love is about healing the deep-rooted trauma within you and bringing you back to the zero-point energy. The zero-point energy is where the me, myself, and I become one I and become the I am. It becomes the heart center where the brain coherence, the heart coherence, and the gut coherence all get back on the same line of communication and begin to create a reality of nothing but abundance and freedom and joy. So survival guide. All right. You're going to be able to keep your egos in check especially because they freak out with big changes, okay? By staying in contribution and service of what you are really good at, where your home field advantage is. Your communicators communicate, your healers heal, your teachers teach, okay? You way showers show the way. You guidance, you guiders guide, okay? You psychics preach on, let's hear it. Share what it is just intuitively about you. It will keep your ego in check during all this changing cast. It will keep you consistent. It will keep you showing up no matter what. When you get caught in the hurricane and you do not show up in your presence, you start getting into the mind. And the mind then starts to create this scenario thinking of what could happen if and when, you know, you're not worthy. Right. So stay consistent in your service and in your contribution to humanity. Stay consistent no matter what. If you're volunteering, keep doing it. It will keep you feeling grounded right now. All right. Challenge based discipline in my classroom. I call it limits, but I'm for you guys. They know what that means. I'm going to call it discipline. Discipline comes from the word disciple. It is not a bad word. Discipline keeps a child feeling safe, believe it or not. Brushing their teeth, eating their vegetables, doing what they're you know, supposed to do for their own health and vitality. Getting your workouts in, moving your body, singing, dancing, self-love, guys. This is all about this discipline-based challenges, which means the things that are not good for you that you know are not good for you, you need to stop doing them. That's what a parent would do. Parent would love you so much, they would say, please do not stick your fingers in that light socket anymore because it's going to hurt you. And so is that toxic relationship, and so is that poison. It's the same tough love, guys. All right, get your time and space. You know, self love has to rejuvenate itself in its own environment, which means that I know some of you are people person, people persons, and animal persons, and nature persons, and sometimes you really just need you. You need this relationship with you. You need to be with yourself to see how far you've come, 
to see where you're going, to decide, to discern, to re-challenge yourself, to repoint yourself back to the direction of what you want. And when you're constantly in someone else or something else's energy field, it becomes quantum entanglement, which means now you are morphed with other beings and other consciousness. And so you are going to be constantly swayed from exactly who and what you are based on who you're around. Make your time and space part of your relationship. I love you so much that I'm going to work on me for you and you're going to work on you for me. That's how much I love you. Create time and space as a form of a boundary. Give yourself roots and wings this year, guys. Roots and wings. What that means is, you know, make sure your bills are paid so you're not in a constant state of survival. You know, find a way to build a life and build a business and build financial structure out of your calling. I've got podcasts on it. I've got workshops on it. Go find them. Being a wealthy work, light worker is your job to be the best example on this planet of what a thriving, energetic, abundant being looks like. It is our job to find that way to bring our calling into abundance, okay? Roots and wings, when I say that, I mean give yourself the opportunity to be really a part of relationships without having to overcommit yourselves. When you overcommit yourselves, what happens is you tangle in someone else's universe. You tangle in someone else's reality. And now, through the punishment of the own inner child, you have to give up your desires or morph your desires and your freedoms based on what someone else considers fun and freedom and what else someone considers abundance. You know, if you're in a marriage with someone and they're shitty with money, excuse my language, and you're not, how does that affect you? Right? You got this great money line. They got a tragic money line. You're going to meet in the middle. You're going to deal with that baggage. So being able to kind of create these healthy boundaries and say, this is what I'm going to take care of. This is what you're going to take care of. We're going to come together. And we're going to celebrate our relationship. We're going to build a life together that is not based in me having to take your programs and your, um, you know, your traumas and your wounds on because I love you. That's the old paradigm, taking someone's baggage because you love them, rescuing someone because you love them, former addict right here. I have done that my whole life. I have found value in rescuing others to feel loved. And I have realized that the greatest statement that I can make this year is just because I can doesn't mean I should. Just because I can save someone from themselves in the moment or pay someone's bills or pull them out of a bad relationship or give them a hug when I'm exhausted does not mean I should. It does not mean that that is the best thing for us all the time. It means take stock. Have I had my time and space? Is my discipline that is going to challenge me into my next stage of my own evolution intact? Am I contributing? Am I showing up? For myself and others if the answer is yes you'll notice that your life starts to move really 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 quickly so the question for you guys is where is your underachiever and who needs to be reparented and how do we reparent through this process of unconditional tough love to bring ourselves back into the confident children that we could be you know what a confident child looks like absolute freedom a sensitive child looks like absolute freedom as long as they're confident and all of these things that I just gave you guys to do are going to build your inner child's confidence and she's going to feel safe he's going to feel safe to step into the light you came here to shine your light and that is not arrogant you came here to bring your unique gifts to the world you came here to be of service you came here to love with all of your heart and to know that you were worthy of receiving that in return and it is our job to fulfill that, to fill that right there. That's what we're here to fulfill, that right there. And with that, we will move into such a peace and such an understanding of ourselves that when we see another inner child at war with themselves through reflection of a, of a loved one, of a stranger, we will move completely into compassion because we will identify with the journey that we are going on ourselves. When we see someone being angry or ignorant or racist or, or acting small, we will know that it's not coming from a place of a bad person. It is coming from a place of a wounded child. And within our own wounded child, we can identify what is needed with that child and we can speak to that person 
through this potential and find the underachiever inside of them and value them, appreciate them. Go up to someone who you know is struggling with something that they don't want anyone to know and appreciate that part of them and do it within yourself. And what you will notice is that your cup will start to feel very full. Your pride will return, but it's not a pride of the ego that needs to mask itself and hide its baggage from some false, false source of bigness that they create. They don't have to create a big, you know, you know, life of money and success to hide their unworthiness. They are just demonstrating it through the place of them. And with to me, pride versus being proud could not be more of a paradox. When we have pride, we won't do things that feel below us. But when we begin to reparent this inner child, we have to go into that. We have to, we basically have to destroy pride. And you guys will notice, I know I've gone through this many times, is that when you're ready to level up and you're ready to go to the next level of your own evolution, your pride literally gets smashed right in front of your eyes, everything that you held or controlled um, or owned disappears on you. And what your higher self is showing you in that moment is that you are still you without anything, without any walls and any baggage and any mask. You are still divine perfection and you never have been any less. You are still exactly who you need to be, except now you're humble. And humble is the truest definition of surrender. And surrender is the seventh step of manifestation. It is the end and final opportunity for us to step into the new game, into the new space of where we need to level up. And with roots and wings, we will be able to have loving, very bonded relationships that are not based in baggage and commitment. They are based in connection and celebration and they can be really, really beautiful. We are humbled because we are not constantly wearing the mask. We are shining our light. We are being of service. We are, we are showing up with contribution to ourselves and others in a way that promotes their healing, not their saving. We cannot save anyone else. We can pr provide the opportunity of holding that space while they do that, reminding them who they are, appreciating the dark spots within someone helping someone see their blind spots and showing them in a loving, compassionate way that the parts of them they believe are broken are actually where all of the magic is stored. This is where we're heading. And it's so amazing to watch, especially in my community over the last year. And I know if you guys are in my community, you've been watching my teacher, trainer, students that are kind of making it through this first year really start to demonstrate who they are. Their unique niches, they're showing up, they're being of service, they're starting their own businesses, they're killing it. And the reason why is because they're proud of themselves. They're, they're working on themselves for themselves and every relationship in their life is improving. And every relationship in your life includes money and time and health. This is a relationship-based universe. Everything that you're experiencing in, you're in relation with. So the things that are holding you underwater right now, those are the places you need to look. That Scorpio energy that's just really heavy right now is forcing your head under the water and saying, take a look at everything you've been avoiding. It is the time is now. The future is now and everything looks really, really bright, especially from a child's eyes, especially when she can hold mom's hand and dad's hand and she can act as that swing again in her life. This is the metaphor that I want you guys to see within yourselves, this relationship that you can have with yourselves and work on that masculine energy, that feminine energy, clear your codependencies, wash away your addictions based in this parenting concept. Look at everything you're avoiding. Find your underachiever and re-nurture and reparent, And allow your overachiever, your home field advantage, to pave the way and help you abundantly create your reality while everything is healing. This is how we create our new reality in our old reality, guys. So thank you guys so much for joining me for November. Remember, November is the, the month of gratitude it's Thanksgiving. It's the idea of celebrating family, connections, friendships, honoring each other, 
and really being that space of safety for yourself and others. So until next month, thank you guys so much for joining me. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. I've got three, four, five, six hundred videos on YouTube. I've got an entire academy dedicated to this work of really showing you the shortcuts, clarifications, the cheat codes, and the hacks to get you where you want to be in the fastest, funnest possible way. So reach out to me in any way or shape or form or my team if you'd like information on joining our academy. Otherwise, we will be in Europe in January. Details coming soon. Not a big tour, but we will be popping in and out of your countries. So stay tuned. I will be announcing when and where we're going to be doing that. Um, otherwise, I will see the rest of you in the classroom next week. Have a great Thanksgiving, guys. And I will see you all very soon.